Hey guys, it's Sarah from New England Junk Journals, and I'm on with a Thrifty Thursday uh, slash Thrifted Treasures. Um, Thrifty Thursday is hosted by Sherry at Turquoise Dreaming, and Thrifted Treasures is hosted by Dale over at Not Too Shabby Chic, and I will have both of their channels linked in the description below. So today I went over to my trans, um, transfer station and I don't know how often I'm going to keep going only because it's getting colder it's getting more wintry where we haven't had exactly like a good snowing um, it's only a matter of time I'm a big chicken about the weather. I've grown up in New England all my life. You'd think that I would be able to uh, handle a little bit of snow and a little bit of ice, but I am a big chicken. I'll, I'll just admit it now. So I will go probably periodically, but I probably won't go all the time uh, in the winter. So I kind of uh, went big <laughs> as my not quite last uh, trip there, but knowing that I wasn't going to go regularly for a while, uh, I kind of um, brought home a bunch. So I'm excited. I got some really interesting things in here. I think I'm going to save my favorites until the end. So stay tuned. Watch till the end of the video. See some really good stuff that I got. Um, let's see, let me move this over to the side. And we're gonna start with some of the things I got. I'm just gonna set these down here for now. Okay, and I'm gonna start with these. Um, one of the things I want to do, and I haven't quite figured out how I'm going to do it yet, but I would absolutely love to make an Agatha Christie themed junk journal. And I have a couple of videos in my queue where I've seen somebody um, has had an Agatha Christie journal or two that I want to look through and see if I can get any ideas. I want to go online, see if I can maybe find a digital kit or some digital ephemera to add to the things that I've already picked up. Um, but I have quite a few of her novels. Um, this one has just like this gorgeous, like fuchsia, it's not quite hot pink, but like a fuchsia cover. Um, and I have a book, I think I showed it a couple of videos ago. Um, and I said that it was, it was for me and I am going to read through it before I start cutting it up if I start cutting it up, but it's kind of just like, um, for those like Agatha Christie nerds with all kinds of extra information and stuff like that. I, I love it. Um, I did find quite a few books here. I've got Curious George Flies a Kite. And this is, let's see here, 1958 copyright, so definitely vintage. It'd be really cute to make a Curious George junk journal. I have this one and guys, that's the copyright, MCMXLV. I should know my Roman numerals, but I don't off the top of my head. Let me just see if there's a, oh, this is a double page right there. The little rabbit who wanted red wings. Just the uh, vintage illustrations caught my eye. Oh, two copyrights, MCMXXX1, okay, 1931, if 
that's correct. 19. Oh, guys, I don't know the L. Is it 50? So that would be maybe 1945. That's my guess. That's my best guess, guys. So these are really adorable illustrations. And let's see if we can make the lighting any better. I don't know. I've been struggling with the lighting in here. I spent probably about a good 20 minutes <laughs> trying to um, get the lighting right. But I think I'm just going to need to buy another lamp for a different directional light. These are adorable. They are all double pages. If you can see, it's got like a little pocket. I have no idea how he gets, I'll have to read it and find out how this cute little white rabbit gets his wings. Oh, I have a feeling, oh, he gets, it's a wishing pond. I have a feeling that uh, it's not all it's cracked up to be. And uh, yeah, he goes back to wanting to be just as he is, a little white rabbit. All right, that's super cute. I got this read to me book, Noah's Ark. And I just loved how they illustrated it. I thought the illustrations were super cute in this. Um, so possibly if I do like a children's Bible book. Oh my gosh, look how cute. Look at all those animals. Yeah, this is gonna be really nice. I like the style, the way this is illustrated. This one is Tuttle's Red Barn, the story of America's oldest family farm. So, I'm a history nut anyway. Like I love different different parts of history and learning about it. And this looked like it was all based on a true story. And off the coast of Maine. So it is definitely and it mentions New Hampshire. So it's definitely about New England. It's about the pilgrims or different generations of people and it'll be interesting to see the history of this little farmhouse and how it came to be so I got this not really I mean I might use some of the illustrations in junk journals um, just because it's quaint in New Englandy but I kind of bought it for the history. Magpie, magpie. This is a very thin paper. Okay, these are Russian folk rhymes. And, oh, I thought I, I thought I would see the copyright in here. Let me see. Nope, I don't see the copyright. But the art is beautiful. Very lovely. Oh, look at those colors. I don't know if those are coming across, but those are really beautiful. So, and I loved these just woodland illustrations very nice it's interesting to see how things how books and, and different things travel the world and how they end up in your neck of the woods and these are really cute illustrations Oops. so I can definitely use these Love them. And that was the surprise garden. And this beautiful, the owl, whoops, 
trying to get not so much of a glare here, guys. The owl and the pussycat. Take that dust cover off and look underneath. Okay, I have been looking for a beautiful nautical cover. Now this is quite, not quite the size I was thinking. This is about, uh, well, let's see if I cut the spine off, it will be about a little less than eight and a half inches by uh, 10 and a quarter. So it's bigger than I was anticipating, but I could probably still use it. But look at this beautiful cover with the seashells in like this, um, I don't know, not hemp, what am I thinking of? Like jute and You guys know what this is. <laughs> My words are failing me, but um, not muslin. That's not the word. What am I thinking? Burlap. Burlap. That is the word I'm thinking of. Or hessian um, for people across the pond. But it looks like hessian or burlap with like a jute cord and these seashells and this beautiful plaid that goes so well with it. But also, <clears throat> I love the owl and the pussycat. But look at these beautiful illustrations with the, the sea theme all throughout. <clears throat> I love this. This is definitely going to end up as a nautical, sea themed journal. So pretty. That was a, that was an interesting and surprising find. They also had this coloring book of lighthouses. So you've got your picture on this side and then I'll have to see let me look at the beginning. Okay. Yeah, so it starts with the colors for the opposite picture. Okay, so then these colors go to this picture. So I'm not quite sure how I'm going to take this picture out, put it in a junk journal, and still maintain this. I just probably won't. I'll just either back this onto something um, and use it as a page and just cover cover this part up or fold it up, put it in a pocket and, you know, not worry too much about the writing. Oh, I found this Walt Disney's version of Pinocchio. And you guys, most of these books come in rough shape, which is why I don't have any compunction most of the time about cutting them up and using them. This is 1939. Copyright. And it's got beautiful color photograph, uh, photographs, illustrations, and black and white illustrations. But these are like the perfect size, these illustrations to matte and make into either journaling cards or pockets. Um, and then we've got like little things here you could fussy cut. So, very cool. They had these two little ones. Skunk at Hemlock Circle. And these are uh, Smithsonian Backyard Books. This one at least is. And they're just cute little books about animals. This one is about a skunk. But the illustrations are really nice. 
the other one I got was Otter on his own. Smithsonian Oceanic Collection. And again, they're just like little books, but I thought these would be great. This would could also be a ocean themed or a sea themed. I'm thinking once I get done with a couple bigger books, whatever scraps I have left over could be used in a little book like this. Take the spine off and use my, uh, I wanna say cricket, it's not a cricket. <laughs> Um, my cinch to do a ring binding that way I can you know put quite a few pages in and make a nice cute little book with whatever scraps I have left over from my other ocean books that'd be a really cute way to use those up I'm terrible about using my scraps all right I got these I'm not going to keep them um, I'm thinking about putting together some, I'll probably bundle them maybe with some Christmas items that I have that I'm not going to use, um, and do like a little giveaway here. I know it won't be this week, but coming up before, hopefully before Christmas, put, putting them together. And I know you guys won't be able to use them for this Christmas, but, um, we're kind of always looking to the future, right? So you guys could use them next year. But these are, um, this one's my book about God, Anglican edition, which I have no idea about these books, guys, except that they're old. This is 1954. And the pages, other than like the beginning, where it's got somebody's name drawn in it, the pages seem to be in good condition again I don't really know about the contents of these guys I didn't read them and I'm definitely not going to keep them um, but they look like something that somebody would want uh, oh this one is actually coming apart but again it's got a lot of very old pictures and most of the pages are in pretty good condition. This is all this is 1953. This one's called Let's Pray. Let's see. Yep. Still holding. 1952. And then this one is a uh, our, the, our Father, and this was published in 1951, so 51, 52, 53, and 54. Alright, so I will let you guys know though when I put together some bundles for giveaways. Um, I have, well, as of recording this, I have about 68 subscribers. Thank you guys. Thank you guys so much. I can see less than half of your names, um, which is okay. I understand people don't necessarily always want to share their subscriptions. That's totally cool. Um, but I didn't realize when I started this channel that unless somebody has their subscription set to public, um, even the people that are subscribed to can't see, uh, which is okay. That's fine, guys. Um, I would love to be able to give you guys a shout out. Um, and I will, uh, for the people that I can see very soon. Some of the other things I got today, they had this whole tub and it is these little foil hearts. Um, a whole bunch of them and then a bunch of beads All right, let's see if we can get close to the camera so you guys can see some of these beads 
That's a little bit better. Some of them are on a string. Can you guys see those? Yeah, just shout at me through the through the TV, through your device. Just shout at me. Yes, we can see them. There you go. <laughs> Sorry. So I thought those would be interesting to make some shaker cards with and make some bead dangles. I got these Faber-Castell watercolor crayons and I may play around with these in here or um, I may let my kids have at them, but they are in excellent condition. I'm not sure that they were even ooh, used. The, um, the paintbrush is still like, hasn't even been uh, softened yet. Uh, okay, guys. Oh, yeah, never mind. No, I'm going to give up on that. That's, I'm not going to struggle. Okay. But beautiful colors. Beautiful watercolor crayon colors there. I love that. So that'll be fun to have a play with. Um, I ran to my Ocean State job lots again and picked up this $3 Fabri-Tac, guys. $3. That's less than half price what you can get at Walmart. I was gobsmacked when I saw it the first time. And then I had to go for something else several weeks later. And they still had some. So I snatched them up. Um... I did get some linens, too, that they had there today, which is very rare. Um, usually when linens come, they they come and go very quickly. But they had these, this beautiful floral print. They had, and all of these have to absolutely go in the washer because, like, some of them you can tell have, like, pet, pet hair on them. Um, so yeah, they all have to get thoroughly washed. They had this beautiful handkerchief. Oh yeah, here we go. These are the ones with the pet hair. And okay, these are like place, um, place settings, um, tape, place mats. That's the word guys. The struggle's real sometimes. The struggle's real. But these beautiful lighthouses. And they had several different ones. And I thought maybe I could. I know they're heavy. Or like they're on canvasy material. But maybe these could become book covers. I always see everything as if it could be a book cover. So we'll get these all washed up and ironed. And we'll see. And they had this wall hanging that was just so beautiful. Um, those lighthouses of America. So we'll find something fun to do with this too. So when I went there, there's a woman who works there very often. Um, Arlene she's really great and she knows that I do junk journaling we've we've talked about it and I've shown her some of examples of what I've done and I said you know I, we got to talking and asking if there was any stationery that had come in and she said that her friend was coming in that very day and bringing stationery and I mean this that's this came with it this ain't it but <laughs> um, with the stationery, she had these beautiful gift tags. A loon. A chickadee. And then a bunch of these tags, these little gift tags. These fold in half. 
and they had a whole bunch of these Christmas ones. They had snowmen, which I mean, I might snag a few snowmen. I'll probably use them in general winter journals, especially off oh, this cute little one. This is adorable. I'll definitely snag a few of these, but the quantity that she had that she said she was not going to use is just a ton. More of these. Some Christmas tree ones. But guys, just like... This little Santa that looks like an elf. <laughs> like a ton of these. And this is... These two bags are pretty much the same. Okay, if I can pick them up. These are the same. So those will go in some bundles when I start making them. And then they had boxes, just boxes of stationery. So I picked out one of, roughly one of each. This beautiful stationery here. With, I'm pretty sure these are just white envelopes. So they're going to be all the same thing, but I'll show you, you know, the decoration. There was that one. There was this one with these beautiful apples. There was this one. This one and this one. So those were really, really lovely. So I got five boxes in all of those. All right, now. I also got the Oxford Annual for Tiny Folks. This is in a rough shape. But I opened it up and this is extremely thick paper. Like, very thick paper. And it was printed in 1937. It's got a beautiful inscription here. And these pages are so thick. I wish I could, like, I'm trying to think. It's very soft and buttery and, like, cottony, but very, very thick. Um, and you've got, like, these, they're not quite monochromatic, but they're, you know, it's just blue and red. Duo chromatic. With, okay, let's see if I can put this open. Just these really cute illustrations. Like, it feels like that's two pieces of paper for sure, but it's not. It's just one. I was so excited to find this. I love finding these little vintage, little vintage treasures. We've got this alphabet. Oh, oh guys, it's ripped. Oh, that's disappointing. But this paper is just so amazing. I might take a few of these pages and add them to the bundles too, just so you can experience this paper. It's like, it's extreme. That's all I can say. It's extremely thick. All right. All right, Sarah, move on. <laughs> oh, 
this needs to be washed, but I found this Goosey Gander Rhymes, a rag book, number 304. And you guys can see it's really grimy, but it's got these awesome nursery rhymes. So I will wash this and I'll see if I can get, can you see that's, that's pencil marks right there. Let's see if that will come out. And these will make beautiful little flips or something like that in a Mother Goose journal or a nursery rhyme journal. So, uh, let's see. No, I don't know if you guys, let me hold it close so you guys can see. Dean's Rag Books, quite indestructible and then a whole bunch of text that I cannot read because it is very small and very faded, unfortunately. I got this tell a tale book. It is the best surprise of all. And it is 19, oh guys, is it 1961? M-C-M-L-X-I. I think that's 1961. Been a while since I did my Roman numerals. But this one's really cute and in absolutely excellent shape. I mean, what I consider excellent shape for what I get at the transfer station. And then, okay, my favorites for last. This is it, guys. I had to fight my sister off for these. <laughs> I was rummaging in and she collects little golden books as well. Um, but I found these in a bag and I absolutely had my hands on these first uh, and saw them first. But she came over and let me see. And then they went uh, in her box. Uh, and then well, I just, I snuck them back out of her box because, you know. <laughs> uh, she forgives me, guys. She does. So these are beautiful. A Day at the Seashore. I love this. So this is also going to be a little ocean-themed journal. It's so beautiful. And this one is 1951, renewed in 1979. Oh my gosh, guys, these darling little illustrations. So cute. Yep, I love it. And then last of all, the good humor man. Oh, and I'm chasing that glare, aren't I? I'm so sorry, guys. This one is copyright 1964, renewed in 1992. And this would make an absolutely beautiful summer journal about the ice cream man in the middle of summer. Oh, I love that little house. That is so cute. Aww. Oh, that's just adorable. All right, guys, that is it. I know we've gone over a half hour here, sorry for that, um, but I was just so excited from all the things that I picked up today. Um, thank you guys so much. Anybody who's made it this far and is still watching, thank you. You are just wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, and thank you everyone who's been watching my videos lately. That has been just so encouraging to me that people actually will stop and watch my videos. Um, yeah, 
So I'm not sure exactly what order this is going to get played in. I know this is going to go the at least the week after I'm filming it right now. Um, so I know I have already done my wallpaper, uh, wallpaper Wednesday. That's already gone up. And I'm going to try to make a series out of that. Um, I did credit in my description box for those um, creating with Jovi because uh, I believe she's the first one that ever did wallpaper Wednesday that I could find in my research um, and I know Angela over at Meet the Shads has also done that shreds I'll have to check that out um, but I linked her also because she does a wallpaper Wednesday um, I, I don't know if she wants her it on the hashtag wallpaper Wednesday videos but I figured I would just put her in there anyway making sure that the credit goes where it is due um, so thank you guys um, yeah uh, I don't know what when I'll be back with another one of these thrifty Thursdays hashtag thrifted treasures but thank you for watching and uh, have a great day